Testosterone not only increases your mood, your discipline, your vitality, it also increases your muscle mass and makes you win more often. So you can be the king that you are and be number one. So I'm going to give you 14 very, very quick, rapid fire ways to increase your testosterone. Some of these you've heard before and others you haven't. So let's start off with talking to attractive women. Talking to attractive women, even just for five minutes, has been shown to increase testosterone by more than 14%, especially for people who have a competitive personality. Now, I want to make sure you understand that competition, this next thing, is incredibly imperative and important. You might have been conditioned by society to think that it is wrong to compete, but the truth is testosterone exists for competition, meaning that your ancestors must have competed in order for your genetics to be here. So you have a killer, a competition person inside you, a competitive mindset within you that you must let out. Understand that you want everything you want because it is hard to get and other people have it, meaning that you can achieve it and other people around you also want what you want and also want what you have meaning that you must be competitive in order to see the success that you want to have in life so moving on to the next one sunlight of course vitamin d you've heard that it helps with your testosterone but it also helps with your androgen receptor sensitivity and density meaning that it can help your body accept more testosterone as well as secrete more testosterone the other thing is, is sleep. Of course, you know, sleep seven to nine hours, more than nine hours, especially is better. You've heard that before. Saturated fat. Of course, you might have heard this before. It is the building block to testosterone. But what you might not have heard is you must avoid seed oils because seed oils, polyunsaturated compounds, they actually denature that good saturated fat within your body. And because you're having both saturated fat and unsaturated fats, you're denaturing the good saturated fat with the bad saturated fat. So I want you, with a bad unsaturated fat, my apologies. So have saturated fats, high amounts, but don't have the unsaturated fat because it will distort the good ones and lead to more calcification in your arteries and more blood pressure, bad stuff, bad stuff. You don't want your good saturated fat to be denatured. Next up, be lean. The reason why being lean helps is because if you are at a body fat percentage greater than 20%, you will have higher levels of aromatase. Aromatase is the enzyme that converts testosterone into estradiol. It is more present in adipose tissue, tissue meaning fat tissue. So if you have more fat in your body, you will have more of this enzyme that converts testosterone into estradiol. And in the testosterone negative feedback, testosterone, because it turns into estradiol, as a man, most of your testosterone comes from your testosterone. Most of your estrogen comes from your testosterone. So if you have high levels of perceived estrogen because you have more fat tissue, then your body will downregulate your testosterone so that you don't have as much estrogen. If you cut down your body fat percentage to about 10 to 15 percent, you will have your potential of your testosterone, the actual potential your body is meant to produce. Next up, zinc. Zinc can help with more chemical reactions having in your body, can facilitate also um, fertility and also facilitate just your testosterone and your hormonal health in general. Then we have PVP, player versus player. What I mean by that is engage in competition and part of engaging in competition, an easy way for implementation is to incorporate martial arts into your life. You can do Muay Thai, you can do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, just any way you can think of, even boxing is good too. Other thing is stress less, make sure to be happy, live a simple life and you will be able to, if you have less stress, you know, listen to music, go on long walks, go and just try to make time, make your life a little bit more simple, do the actual work tasks that are most effective, that produce actual more things instead of just busy work and you will have more time so that you can be less stressed. And remember, cortisol, long-term stress is actually inverse to testosterone. The other thing I'll mention with that, because I already said seed oils for the other thing, kind of, is uh, with stress, you can actually incorporate short bursts of stress. And short bursts of stress, like let's say you just sprint or you have a confrontation or something like that. Not that we should seek confrontations, but if you have quick bursts of stress, like adrenaline, then you will be able to have a higher androgen receptor sensitivity. So we spoke about androgen receptors accepting the testosterone, but also testosterone spikes because of your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands can also create testosterone, secrete testosterone, but most of your testosterone comes from your balls.
Ah, uh, yes, soy. <laughs> this is supposed to be soy face. <laughs> I was confused. Okay, avoid soy and um, they're called phytoestrogens. So not all phytoestrogen, not all phytoestrogens are bad. A lot of them can actually facilitate your heart health and your brain health because it's just what estrogen does. However, long-term consumption of, of powerful phytoestrogens like soy and flax, they can cause more gut bacteria that actually metabolize your food into powerful forms of estrogen, possibly even more powerful than estradiol. An example of one of these compounds that your gut can produce is called equal. And equal producing bacteria are in about 50% of people, 25 to 50% of people. And so if you want to have less high estrogen levels that your body is creating, then and, and have more testosterone consequently because your testosterone negative feedback isn't getting down regulated, then avoid powerful phytoestrogens like soy and flax. That's important too. Then you have SHBG. So SHBG is sex hormone binding globulin. So we talked about how androgen receptor sensitivity and density accept the testosterone. So if you have low levels of testosterone, but great androgen receptors, what will happen is that you still look great. You still will look strong because the testosterone you have is being fully utilized. Now, SHBG, what it does is it binds the testosterone and makes it less bioavailable. If you have lower SHBG, you have more free testosterone from your total testosterone. Sorry, I have to restate that. About one to 3% of your total testosterone is your free testosterone. And your free testosterone is what is usable, is what can be actually accepted by the androgen receptors. So you can decrease your SHBG by having a high protein diet. The last thing I'll mention is creatine. Creatine has been shown to increase dihydrotestosterone and no creatine does not make you bald, even though some people say dihydrotestosterone makes you bald. Not everybody has the male, pardon, bat, <laughs> male pattern baldness genetic. Now, if you have the male pattern baldness genetic, which comes from your mother, then you, if you have higher levels of DHT, yeah, you might go bald and that's just the truth. But if you do not have the genetic, it won't matter. And DHT is three to five times more potent at the androgen receptor level, at the cellular level, at the androgen receptors. So DHT is great and creatine can increase your DHT and keep your testosterone the same. And so that's essentially making it so more of your testosterone goes through five alpha reduction into dihydrous testosterone. And these have been 14 ways to increase your testosterone. I hope you enjoyed very valuable video. I'm like God's gift to humanity, right? <laughs> Check the link in the description to optimize your hormones even more because that's my full system. And there's a lot more that goes into your health and hormones. And yeah, like the video.